Hey guys, today I'm here to bring you my second full-fledged guide over the Berserker class in Lost Ark. If you've seen my Striker video, this guide is going to be structured just like that, pretty much going over everything and anything regarding the Berserker. Let me know what other class guides you want me to do, or just what Lost Ark videos you want to see in general. I'm focusing on the classes I play first because, I mean, I might as well share my research with everyone. And before I officially start the video, please remember to like and subscribe as it helps me a lot. Maybe even check out my Twitch channel if you really want to, which you do. And now that we got that out of the way, let's dive into the video. First up, let's go over the two main class engravings or builds at your disposal when playing the Berserker. First, you're going to have the OG build called the Berserker's Technique Engraving, which relies on building your meter to basically go Super Saiyan for big burst. The reason I say OG is that the build used to be the only meta build for Berserker, and it is still really strong today. However, Smallgate saw that the unilateral playstyle for Berserker wasn't good for the game, so they rightly buffed the other class engraving called Mayhem. And oh boy, is this engraving the best thing since sliced bread. Not only is it the new meta build for Berserker, but it's also the new meta fun build. This essentially has you in a slightly weaker, but permanent Berserker mode with no need to fill your gauge anymore. If only Smilegate will majorly buff Esoteric Flurry just like Mayhem, we can wish. Funnily enough, this build also lowers your HP to 25%, but reduces the damage you take by 65%, so only a little bit worse than actually having a normal 100% health bar. The great thing about this, however, is that you can fully heal with the lowest tier of battle health pot, whereas every other class can't even fully heal at all with even the highest health potion. Cursed All also has a very nullified effect as you're already at 25% HP. But you can still run Berserker's Technique if you prefer that playstyle because it is still very viable. Now we can talk about the good old skill point allocation for each build going over tier 1 to early tier 3 and for the latest of late game in tier 3 for both single target and AoE encounters. Let's talk about Mayhem first because it's my favorite. Early game skill point allocation for AoE and single target for Mayhem is shown here in these two builds. For the single target build, you will gather your two early buff abilities in Red Dust and Chainsword, and then mostly allocate your points in your hard hitters like Hellblade. A great addition to the build is that we can take the talent that makes Hellblade deal more damage when we're low HP. I'll go over this more in detail later, but Mayhem has a lot of advantages of their HP being capped to 25%, go figure. Next we have the AoE build, where just like most classes, the AoE build can fluctuate as the harder content in this game is single target. That means while you can have an AoE build that's strong for the MVP screen and Chaos Dungeons, you can alter it how you see fit. Now we can take a look at the late game builds for single target and AoE for Mayhem. You won't be able to allocate the amount of skill points needed in these builds quite yet because the game isn't quite as far in yet but you can shoot for these skill points with Pryo on your hard hitters as you get the required skill points. Those hard hitters are going to be Finish Strike, Hellblade, and Swordstorm as you use those in your main burst combos. Also for Red Dust, you can take the second final tripod for a more team oriented playstyle. However, we don't really play Mayhem for team play, so I recommend the first tripod. Now we can talk about Berserker's Technique, which is the beta Oh, I mean alternate version of the Berserker. Just like with Mayhem, we're going to go over early and late game single target and AoE builds. Deep diving into it, we can take a look at the early game setups we have going for Berserker's technique. As you get more skill points in the later tiers of the game, try to follow the priority here. Put more skill points into the hard hitters and fill out the rest of your abilities after them. And just like with Mayhem, the hard hitters are Finish Strike and Hellblade, and for this build specifically, you want to get points into Strike Wave and Wind Blade when available. For the late game single target build, we actually have two options with slight differences, however the gear doesn't change depending on the build. The two builds are here and are both used in Endgame for Korea. The main differences are in one build you use Wind Blade and Chainsword, and in the other you use Power Break and Mount Crash. You can play both and see which build you find more fun. Windblade and Mountain Crash kind of do the same thing as they give a minor buff, so feel free to pick whichever one you want. 
The AoE build can be exactly the same as the build for Mayhem, except you can change Tempest Slash and Mountain Crash to increase your rage building in your tripods. Now let's talk about the engravings for your Berserker for early and late game. First let's talk about both early game engravings for each build. Berserker's technique only uses the first level of your class engraving, and this is the case for both early and late game. So it's actually super easy to get your first level of the class engraving and then work on your secondary engravings even in the early game. As you can see, the OP late game engravings are actually some of the worst for the early game as you can't really reach the third level on any of the engravings as you're switching out your gear a lot. So you're essentially just nerfing yourself with very little benefit if you take engravings like Grudge and Curse Stall. So you can focus on the engravings in the tier list first and that's what I would recommend. For Mayhem, you can basically focus on the two S tier engravings while gearing in tier 1 to early tier 2, those being Master's Tenacity and your class engraving. The great thing about Master's Tenacity and your class engraving is that they go hand in hand and provide no detriment whatsoever. And if you have room for a third engraving, you can get any of the A tier engravings. Moving over to the late game engravings for each class, things get a little bit more set in stone. Starting with the Berserker's Technique, you can see that there's only two tiers S and A tier. S tier being the engravings literally every Berserker with this class build will use. You go one level in Berserker's Technique and get the third level in each of the S tier engravings that you see here. However, there are only five engravings in the S tier meaning you have an option for one more engraving to get in the A tier. You can essentially pick any of the A tier engravings for success for your last engraving. Each top tier Berserker's Technique player in Korea will choose whichever one they want. Even heavy armor is usable if you want more defense. On to Mayhem Berserker. There's practically very little wiggle room as all top Korean Mayhem Berserkers run the exact same class engraving build. You pick up each of the S tier engravings and get them to level 3, except Cursed All engraving which you cap at level 2, as you can't get all 6 engravings up to level 3. The A tier is left up to the player if they want to leave out one of the S tier engravings to put, replace them with a different damage engraving in Ambush Master or the tankiness in Heavy Armor. I recommend just doing what all the top tier Korean players are going for at the moment. That was a lot of talk about engravings, but that should be all you need to know about the engravings for each build. And now we can talk about the stat priority for both Mayhem and Berserker's Technique. And as you can imagine, the Mayhem build allows for more speed and the Berserker's Technique build is slower and more focused on building your Fury Meter. Going over the Mayhem build first, we stack Crit and Swiftness with priority going over to Crit, which is about a 60-40 split favoring Critical Strike. Easy enough if you ask me. The Berserker's Technique build is a little bit more lopsided, stacking Specialization and a little bit of Crit and Swiftness. For you number crunchers out there, you take about 60% spec with 26% crit and 24% swiftness. I know the percentage for crit and swiftness is a little bit weird, but almost all top tier Berserker's Technique players take slightly more crit than swiftness. However, don't freak out if your gear demands a tiny bit more swiftness than crit. You have to work with the gear that you're given, so in the early game, you can kind of just do what you can and try to get your stat priority later on in the game. And I know you stack three different stats in the late game, but in the early game if you're a Berserker Technique player, you want to mainly focus on stacking spec and a little bit of crit, as spreading out your stats too much in the early game will be really hard. Boom! Now we can talk about gems for each build. Just like with most classes, you stack damage and cooldown gems on your hard hitters, so let's start with Mayhem. You will want to max cooldown and damage gems for Finish Strike, Tempest Slash, Hellblade, Strike Wave, Windblade if you have it, and Sword Storm. You do want a cooldown gem for Red Dust, just no damage gem. I would prioritize gems on Finish Strike, Hellblade, and Sword Storm early game as those abilities are the main abilities you use for damage. Then you can go ahead and give the middle finger to Chainsword, Mountain Crash if you have it, and Charge as they're mostly utility abilities so you don't want to get gems for them. Gems for Berserker's Technique are going to be a little bit more nuanced as I will show the gems for both the late game builds. For build number 1 on the left, you take a page out of Mayhem's book and stack both cooldown and damage gems for all your abilities except Red Dust, Charge, and Chainsword. 
Priority during your early game experience will be on your hard hitters like Finish Strike, Hellblade, and you only take a cooldown gem on Red Dust. For build number two, you do the same thing as you get cooldown and damage gems for almost all your abilities, including powerful swing with, of course, a cooldown gem for Red Dust. Again, leave out Mountain Crash and Charge as they're mainly used for utility. On to the ruins for this build now. Let's focus on Mayhem first and show the ruins for each build option. We have both builds shown here with the list of ruins for each ability. As you'll notice, you will need a lot of Gale Wind ruins regardless of build, but there's a few options you can do. For example, Tempest Slash, you can run Gale Wind to lower the animation time, or run an Overwhelm Ruin, whichever suits you or is at your disposal. Most Korean players run Gelwin because being animation locked is really bad for high tier endgame because you can die immediately. Notice the other options of runes for your abilities depending on what content you're running and or what you have at your disposal. You can change the rune options for these builds. Now onto the Berserker's Technique runes, again showing the two different builds with the options of runes for each. Unlike with Mayhem, you have to sacrifice a bit of movement for your runes because you require wealth runes to build your meter quickly. And depending on the amount of spec you have, you can also add even more wealth runes if you need it. Options for where to put your wealth runes on your abilities that I've seen across different top tier players are Red Dust, Windblade, Tempest Slash, or even Charge. However, for the top of top tier endgame with Biss stats, I would recommend these options for ruins shown here. For the final part of the build, we can go over the RNG, I mean card sets for the Berserker. However, I won't really need to split this into two options as both builds will go for an early budget card set and Lost Wind Cliff for the 7% crit buff. You will later save up for the Light of Salvation set that makes all your damage Holy and increases holy damage by 15%, which is really broken. For hard content on Mayhem, however, you can use the We'll Meet Again card set as it decreases the damage you take by 12% while you're below 50% HP, which is literally always. You can get this set super early in the game, so I've been using this set whenever I'm trying new content on my Mayhem Berserker. Now onto the extra fun bit, which is the rotation for each build. Up first is the Golden Child Mayhem, where you generally have a rotation based upon your two buff abilities called Red Dust and Chainsword, or Mountain Crash depending on if that's what you picked. Your DPS rotation will focus on buffing your hard hitters as shown here. Remember, you can also use Charge and Hellblade to maneuver around if you need to dodge an ability in a pinch, which will change your rotation if you've used it prior. For Berserker's Technique, the same ideas apply where you use your buffs to deal maximum damage, with the caveat being you can pop your Empowered Form first if you have it up. Here's the rotation, which looks a lot similar to your Mayhem DPS rotation. However, the Empowered ability you get during your Empowered Form is better in Berserker's Technique. Make sure to use your Burst Mode when you know you're going to be able to do your DPS rotation and the boss doesn't move out of the way of your DPS. Additionally, make sure that when you pop your burst mode, you have your cooldowns up because you're going, you're going to be extremely sad if you don't have your cooldowns up. Sheesh! And there we have it, the completed guide for the Berserker class. I hope you guys enjoyed the video as it took quite a few number of hours to do the research and then write the script and then finally edit and make the video. I actually made this video partially for myself as I was looking into how to optimally play my Berserker ult. But I do need more ideas for videos that you guys might like, so please leave a comment for what type of videos would be interesting to you guys. Also, subscribe if you want to see more guides for Lost Ark. And that's going to be it for me guys, have a good one.